So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Michal Foyti, and I'm working on, in uh, Red Hat as a senior software engineer, working on the cloud stuff, mainly Delta Cloud API. This is Francesco Valero. He can introduce himself. Uh, I, am so <laughs> <laughs> I am software engineer at Red Hat as well, and I'm working on EULUS. Okay. So and today we will talk about the uh, Delta Cloud API, what's, what's new, why you should, should care, and uh, Francesco, I will then head on from Francesco and he will talk about the ELUS project, how beautiful it is. So what is Delta Cloud? Basically Delta Cloud is a cloud, cross-cloud abstraction layer that protects you from the various changes uh, on the cloud API side. Uh, Delta Cloud is implemented as a small RESTful service, so it's HTTP based, no weird APIs, nothing. So. So if you have your application uh, which talk to the, some cloud provider and you want to you know, uh, use one common interface for, for that cloud provider, you can use Delta Cloud API. I will talk about it later. So why another API, right? Like there are many APIs. So first of all, all cloud providers are evil. They want to lock you, they want to suck your money. And this is basically what their business is, right? This is what the cloud business is about, like make you use some uh, cloud provider, then you start using it, you get addicted to the cloud provider, all your infrastructure is built for that cloud provider, and then someone from your management, you know, say, okay, we want to switch because this is very expensive. And all the developers need to rewrite all the code, uh, start with a completely new API and stuff. So why they are doing that? Just to keep your locked, you, uh, keep your locked in their service so they can suck more money from you. So this is, we, we call this vendor lock-in. This happens all the time in IT. You can remember like a big a database uh, servers that you start use, and after that you discover that there is a MySQL or Postgres that you can use to do basically the same stuff as with this big database. So, and, but all your infrastructure was built uh, to use this big database. So you know, it was very hard to transition. You need to invest a lot of money for that. The second point is that uh, the cloud providers usually suck in how they design the API, so they uh, really uh, don't care too much about how their API looks like and that the API they offer is the main entry point for their customers because they sometimes think that uh, their dashboard is what their customers really want. So if you are a big company and you want to launch like 1,000 instances, you will go to Amazon EC2 and you will start clicking you know, as a monkey and no. So they usually use the clients, so usually they use their APIs. They are not, you know, just, they are not usually not very beautiful and the documentations uh, usually is not very well written, so yeah. So if you, if you are a cloud API and you plan to add, uh, uh, if you are a, a cloud provider and you, you want to implement your own API based on your standard, there is a guide for you like, please don't do it. Uh, take one of the APIs that are standards are on the, you know, uh, CME Delta Cloud or maybe EC2 or something that is already here or OpenStack API. Don't develop new APIs, please. Yeah, and there is also this thing with API backward compatibility. Uh, you know, sometimes it happens that if you start using some cloud providers that introduce a new features, but they break the old features, they call it like a progress, you know, like they will give you something new fast things, but your application is broken. And Delta Cloud ultimately protects you, uh, you know, for, for, for that. So, and why you should use Delta Cloud API for speaking to cloud providers? Because Delta Cloud is open source project. Uh, it's a top level uh, soft Apache Software Foundation project. It's not driven by any company, even though all, almost all developers are from Red Hat. But we are a lot of contributors from companies like Fujitsu, IBM, uh, some completely random people that uh, have some small startups and they use Delta Cloud API for something so they contribute a code or driver or so something else. Yeah, and uh, because we care where the cloud vendors don't, so, so we're protecting you about the various API changes. Uh, we, you know, we are, we are trying also to offer you switching from one cloud provider to another cloud provider without changing your application. This is the main goal, so that's why. So how does it work? We really uh, try hard to make a very good cloud abstraction object model. So basically we try to abstract what cloud looks like, what are the base models, and we came up with these five uh, models. First is the Realm. 
which is uh, something like a region in EC2, uh, which represent uh, some organization you need. It may be a data center, cluster, or something else uh, where your virtual machines are running. Uh, realms are very important because they can change the service license agreements uh, or, you know, if there are some, uh, if, you, if, you are, uh, if you are collecting information about your employees in your European Union, you can export them to the U.S. cloud centers and stuff like that. So that Realms is very important. Then we have the hardware profiles, which are the sizing of the virtual machines. So they define like uh, how many virtual CPUs the, vir the resulting virtual machine should have, how many memory the virtual machine should have, how many storage, stuff like that. We are f very flexible in hardware profiles, so we can map them to all the cloud providers we support. Uh, for EC2, we map them statically to their instance types, if I'm not wrong. For OpenStack or RAFM or Oviert, uh, you know, they're very flexible. You can choose like the memory from the range, uh, basically well, whatever value you want. And then you have the image, which is the template or is a, you know, it, it represents a root uh, partition for your virtual machine, which have the operating system installed, some application installed, and it's bundled as an image. Uh, this is a template in RefM, it's an image in uh, Amazon, it's OpenStack is an image, so we, we map this thing to all these different providers. And then in the end you have the instance, which is the running virtual machine. You can manage instances, you can, you can turn it off, you can create the new instances, you can uh, reboot them, you know, all, all this life cycle. And this object model, these five models, applies to all uh, the drivers we currently have. Uh, so we support Aruba Cloud, which is Italian cloud provider. Yeah, we have Azure, which is Microsoft thing, but we don't really support the cloud computing part, we just support the storage part. Then we recently added the Digital Ocean driver, which is very new cloud that offers the SSD storage for crazy price. Then uh, we have the EC2, Amazon, uh, Eucalyptus, uh, Fujitsu contributed their own driver. It's, it's features, uh, featureful, I think. Go Grid, Google, Google have a storage uh, support, uh, Open Nebula, OpenStack, Rackspace, RefMovir, you know, all these cloud providers work the same. So if you start using Delta Cloud, you can speak uh, using these five models to all these cloud providers without any problem. So you can start the virtual machines, manage them as you want. So how you can install Delta Cloud, it's very easy. If you are the Ruby user, you can just run gem install Delta Cloud Core. It will install all dependencies so you can start using it. If you are a Fedora user, you can, it's packaged, so you just run yum install Delta Cloud Core all. If you are Debian user, so we welcome your contribution if you want to package Delta Cloud for Debian. Here we go. Uh, other distributions, I don't know. I saw, I saw uh, some package in Brew in macOS, so yeah, it's pretty, we are speeding around. So how to use it? It's very simple. If you install Delta Cloud, you can start it by Delta Cloud D command, which is a daemon, but it's not real daemon because it's running on foreground by default. But uh, then you specify the driver. So in this case, it's EC2. Uh, then Delta Cloud will start uh, running on, on the local host on port 3001. You can you know, change the port, change the host, change the IP address, whatever. And then, uh, since it's, I forgot to say it's REST-based, so we, you don't need a client. If you know how to program HTTP clients, it's very simple. But we offer the clients for Ruby, Python. We have C client, even Java client, maybe some other clients. Or you can use my favorite curl. So on command line, you can, in this case, uh, you can create a new instance, so a new virtual machine in EC2 using the, the this AMI, the, the, this AMI, this this AMI, I don't know what is it, this AMI, it's just random AMI I choose. And then you say, okay, I want to get back JSON. You can also get back XML, doesn't matter. Uh, the authentication is uh, like your Amazon API key and secret key, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, and this is the collection, and since it's post, so you just say, okay, just create this, this new thing, new instance. There are, there are more examples on our website, so if you are interested, you can see them all. Yep. Now, in an example, how, how does the thing know which EC2 server and which EC2 region it should talk to? Well, that's a good question. First, uh, 
the, the server is uh, based on the region, right? So you can specify the provider. We have the special API provider variable, and by default is a, U, is a US West, if, if I'm not wrong, but you can override us but API provider. So you can say like a European Union or Asia or something like that. And then we have the configuration file where we have all the entry points for all these different regions. So, so it'll automatically switch and speak to that entry point. Yeah, and you, you can change it by curl, so you don't need to uh, like configure anything if you're on Delta Cloud. You can change it per request. So you just send a special header where you said, okay, X Delta Cloud provider is, I don't know, Asia. So uh, it, will, it will use Asia provider. Okay, so, and recently we released the version one. So finally, after, I don't know, two years of development, we have the stable version, with, with what we ship. So what are the main features? Since we all love Ruby, uh, we make the Delta Cloud pluggable, so you can uh, mount it in your Rails application. So you don't need to run it as a server, you just mount it and you can use it internally in your Rails app and query the providers. So it's kind of a library workaround, because we really, we really don't want to you know, make a library from Delta Cloud for various reasons. And uh, by accident, we actually make a Ruby library. So because Delta Cloud can be now required in your Ruby script, so you don't even need to run anything, just required it, and you can query the driver's API directly, which we don't want to do. So please don't do it if you want to. And OK, there are a new drivers. So we start support uh, OpenStack, SX, and Folsom. It's not really in progress. We tested it. It works perfectly. So. We now are looking forward what incompatibilities will be in Grizzly. Uh, we have the OVR 3.1 support and with this fresh new VM payload feature where you can use to pass the user data inside to, in, to the instance. So you can use that, for example, for transferring some small database uh, files or I don't know, the, the one-time passwords or something like that. If you use the VM payload, it will automatically appear in the virtual machine CD-ROM drive. So you will have the CD-ROM, and you, you can get what you, you know, what you pass them there. It can be a string, whatever. And Ovet Orfali uh, contributed with user API support. So meanwhile, we had the Ovirt just admin level API. So you need to be admin user to, to speak through Delta Cloud. But now you can, have, you, you can be just a regular Ovirt user, and you can use Delta Cloud for that. Fujitsu, as I said, they contributed to the FGCP platform. It's, uh, it's very featureful, like it has all the collections Delta Cloud support, you know, all instances, keys, even load balancers and all the crazy stuff they have. DigitalOcean, yeah, this is the SSD provider. Aruba, and yeah. So, but the most important uh, changes were that we added new API frontends. Uh, before we had just one Delta Cloud API, right? Uh, with our own format, our own media type with XML and JSON. But now we add the support for EC2 API. So you can, land, you can start Delta Cloud and you can say, okay, I want to advertise the, the EC2 API. And your client, if you have a client that, that already speak to EC2, you can speak, for example, to RefM or to OpenStack using the EC2 API or all these other cloud providers we support. So it's additional API to Delta Cloud. You can also launch Delta Cloud with multiple APIs if you want. You can have like EC2 Delta Cloud and you, you can use it. And more important, we add the new DMTF uh, 101 API. I will talk about that more in the next slide. So CIMI, what is CIMI? So it's, CIMI is emerging uh, cloud industry standard. So it's not something that some guys or some community develops, but it's it's done by the DMTF organization, which is the organization responsible for formats like a, a OVF or SMBIOS, if you know. There are a lot of standards that they're working on. I saw the presentation earlier today, and uh, the guy was list all these uh, standards that they developed. Uh, this consortium or uh, the group consists of the leaders in the industry. So I don't know, Microsoft, Citrix, Broadcom, Red Hat, VMware, Oracle, Cisco, I don't know, there are many companies involved, and they all uh, try to agree about the standard, how the cloud standard API should look like, right? It takes like only two years to make some consensus, and now we have this uh, very young standard. Uh, it was released like half a year ago, but Delta Cloud supports it. So currently we are the only implementers of CIMI standard, so you, so you can, use the CIMI uh, standard for all the providers we support. So you can speak uh, using CIMI to EC2, to OpenStack, to RefM, 
right? So it's, it's very, it's, it's very nice. So for the future, like you can try it out, you can play with all these different providers, and if they start implementing CME, you can just throw away Delta Cloud and use it. But this will never happen, of course. So and yeah, so how the CME looks like? Uh, it has uh, several models. Uh, machine maps to the instance in Delta Cloud. Volume maps to the storage volumes in Delta Cloud. Network maps to nothing right now because this is something we are working on right now. Monitoring and system are not supported. I will tell why. Delta Cloud is stateless, right? It has no database, nothing. So we can't really store something on your machine. So, but with system, system is not supported on any on, the, on any backend cloud we currently support. So you can't really create a complicated system description how system consists of several virtual machines, networking, uh, volumes, everything is connected together to create a very large deployment uh, template. No, none of the providers currently uh, around support this schema, so, so we don't really support in Delta Cloud as well. Yeah, I, I will just briefly go through the details on machine. Yeah, I know. Uh, machine a model have uh, several sub-entities for this machine configuration, which maps to the hardware profiles in Delta Cloud. Uh, machine image represent the ma image. Machine admins represent the keys. So machine admin is used to describe like a, a credentials for the user, like an admin and password or admin and uh, SSH key. Then you have a machine template, which is something like a template from all these three. And then you can launch this template and get the machine. So that's basically what is the workflow in Simi. Uh, Simi is, it looks terrible if you look at the standard, like it's a lot of uh, pages to read, a lot of examples and a lot of XMLs, but it's very extensible. It's, it's very, very well written uh, standard, like the specification is well done. Uh, you, can, you can extend the Simi if it doesn't support something you have. You can use a resource metadata, so you create uh, that element or that property on machine, for example, using resource metadata and then you can use it. So basically, the valid uh, entry point for CME is just nothing, just cloud entry point slash, and you, have, you are implementing CME. So by default, uh, you don't need to implement nothing of, on the CME entities, which, which is a good thing, right? So you implement just the, just the parts that you, you as a cloud provider supports. Yeah, and uh, Delta Cloud versus, with Delta Cloud, it's very easy to use a CME. As, as previously, you just start Delta Cloud minus E and driver you want to use, and uh, you add one more parameter, which is frontend, and you say see me. And Delta Cloud is now uh, serving you on this URL, which is the cloud entry point for see me. You know, and you can, as on the previous example, use curl to get, for example, the details about the machine instance one. And what you will get back is this monster uh, JSON. You know, it looks very terrible, but but actually, we implement a lot of stuff that we don't need to implement in CME. So on your, on your provider, it will look very, very nice. So the machine have an ID, name, descriptions. These are mandatory properties. A user, user can set the properties. Uh, Realm uh, that we add, this is not part of the CME specification. But as I said, you can use the resource metadata to extend it. So you can add whatever property you want. And machine image, which is a reference to the machine image that was used for create this machine, the state, uh, how much CPU, how much memory is used, uh, the disk, the disks that are mapped to the instance, uh, the volumes that are additional volumes that are mapped to the instance, and then we advertise the operations that are possible for this uh, machine. So you can reboot, you can start, uh, stop, you know, you can remove the, the virtual machine. Okay, so what to the next uh, in Delta Cloud? We are trying to improve the CME support. So even we, we are stateless, we recently added to database just because of CME. So we will act as a provider in, in this case where we, we, we will be able to create a complex systems and then we can deploy these systems on the cloud providers. This is something we are currently working on. Then we have uh, ongoing discussion about networking API because Delta Cloud itself have no del networking API so far. But, but because there are projects like Quantum and you know, vSphere and uh, RefM have also networking APIs, so we are trying to figure out what will be the best abstraction model for this, uh, 
in Delta Cloud. So we are currently in a process for evaluating what uh, the model should look like, what properties we should support, so they will be common for all cloud providers we currently have. Then the storage API is the same story because OpenStack have a Cinder. Cinder will have the API as well, so we want to do something similar in Delta Cloud as well, but this is a long-term goal. We also want to add, or we are currently working on the new drivers. So Google uh, launched a, their new cloud uh, infrastructure as a service, cloud computing servers, which is called Google Compute Engine. It's not the app engine, but it's really like you can launch your instances, virtual machines and stuff. It's currently invitation only. I'm not sure if they launch it publicly. So we are currently writing a drivers for, for that. CloudStack uh, is another emerging uh, cloud project, something like OpenStack. And uh, this guy is actually writing the, writing the driver for Delta Cloud. And if you have your own company or you run uh, some clouds in the Czech Republic or somewhere else and you want to be part of Delta Cloud, it's very easy to write your own driver. Seriously, it's just implementing a few methods uh, in Ruby, you are done. And also we have, uh, we want to have more API frontends maybe, uh, maybe OpenStack API, I don't know. If somebody needs, uh, you can ask on a you know, uh, mailing list and we can start discussions. And uh, finally, stateful Delta Cloud application, it will be very important because currently, uh, if you are, uh, for example, in Elus, uh, to, to get the state of the virtual, right, you, need, you, you want to know when the state of the virtual machine change. So if you have a virtual machine that is running and you want to pull uh, the Delta Cloud uh, for the state change, you need to do a lot of re requests, right, the HTML. Like every five seconds, you need to do fire a request to Delta Cloud and query, okay, what is the state of this instance? So we want to be more friendly to these applications. So you will, you will ultimately reg register a hook that will tell, okay, if this instance state, uh, change the state to the running, then uh, post the XML of this instance to this URL. So this is something we're currently working on as well. So, okay, so this is it from the Delta Cloud side, and now I will uh, hand off to Francesco, and he will tell you more about Elus, which is the project that used Delta Cloud massively. Massively is not the right word. We are using just only Delta Cloud to speak with different cloud providers. Anyway, what is the EULUS project and how oh, you can change uh, your lifestyle somehow, obviously. Well, uh, I will start saying that what is EULUS project? The EULUS project is the key to go out from the vendor lock-in when you have to manage different cloud providers because your company, your startup, your whatever, uh, the budget problems. So this set of tools will help you to move around different cloud providers uh, upon your needs. So how? Well, uh, is manageable. So you have a command line interface, you have a web UI, and you have a REST API that is a front end for the uh, EULUS, uh, EULUS, let's say, utilities and methods, and Delta Cloud as well. So actually, we are also a proxy between Delta Cloud and EULUS. And well, to give an eye level view, you have your, okay, you have here your private cloud, like Rev, Eucalyptus, VM, uh, VMware, OpenStack, and you have here Amazon EC2, Rackspace, and others. So, or you can uh, develop, for example, uh, your solution, your application, web application, services, whatever, from here, your private cloud, and move it to Amazon EC2. Well, Eulus is willing to help you to accomplish this task. So you can have your private cloud with OpenStack, if you don't have money, or uh, if you have money, you can go to Rev, for example, or vSphere, and create your virtual image of RHEL, Fedora, okay. Not Fedora 14, it was just a joke. It's all Fedoras, so no problem on that. 
Yes, and Windows as well. And allow you to have, um, let's say, the private area where you are doing your staging, and the public area with Amazon EC2, Rackspace, and all the cloud providers that Delta Cloud support. So we can have a staging area inside your own private cloud and the public area where you publish your milestones all the time. Well, always doing that. Uh, you can create images, you can manage images, and uh, well, I guess it's all because it's what you need. So always doing it. Uh, which languages or which API is able to interact with? Well, at the moment we have just Rev, Ovirt, Amazon, and OpenStack. Ah, oh, yeah, and Mock, that is the most beautiful driver ever. Oh, uh, why just those uh, drivers? Uh, the project is actually new, and uh, our massive work is to make things done on what is most available. So in order to get the feedback from different people. So we know that OpenStack is the hype now. We know that Amazon is it been hype now, it's some serious things. And uh, Ovirt and Rev, because we love open source and we love, of course, Red Hat. So, <laughs> well, um, actually we are working on other drivers as well. But the thing is that those three drivers was the most, uh, let's say, that, that they was sharing the most, uh, the most of the API and the interfaces. So we start working on that, and we are working on other drivers as well, trying to follow Delta Cloud development. We also support vSphere. vSphere. Sorry, yes. We, uh, here, the director say that we support also vSphere, and that's right. And, uh, well, uh, since I forgot to mention that we're supporting Mock, the Mock driver is the one that we are running all our tests at the beginning. Why? Because it's the one that supports everything. So for that, it's the most beautiful one. So we, we are able to try all the features that we have. We are able to move around instances and everything with Mock, because the one that you are sure 100% that will work, because support everything. But obviously, in real life, it's not in this way. Amazon sometimes change, sometimes fail on support. So we are working on ourselves with uh, Ovirt and OpenStack more. Well, how to install it? To install it, it's easy. Using Fedora is a must, because you just run yum install, you lose all, and voila, you have it. Or you can go on the website, eulusproject.org, and download the sources following the website. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, and that's great, because you can learn how it's working and uh, see some real demo about what it is, what it's not. And thanks. That's all. And yes, uh, we have the first question. Please, uh, Chris. I'm, maybe I missed it. But I understand what exactly it is. It's the glue between moving instances from your private to public and, and back and forth. That's what, that's what this project is. Somehow, is the glue that, uh, okay, let's maybe take. Not the glue, maybe not the glue. No, 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 it's the perfect word. No, no, the word is perfect, but okay. If you see from here, more uh, is the broker. You know, between the private cloud and the public cloud. So, in order to not run your scripts twice, four, seven, one thousand times, every time you have to move from staging to public, these allow you to uh, cleanly manage, manage both instances in the same time. So that this is what is trying to accomplish. So is the glue between all the cloud providers, all the cl customer needs or all the users' needs, mostly, and uh, wrap it inside. So and, and this is uh, something you would install on the back end? Uh, this isn't a public service or a, you know, like something I can... Well, actually, yes. We, we, you can run it everywhere you want, because it, it don't care. It's using Delta Cloud to speak with the cloud providers. So internally, 
will be useful because you can uh, interact with your private cloud and also with the public clouds. But if you want to have your private instance on EC2, you can just uh, deploy on EC2 and use some VPN to connect to your private network because Amazon allow you to do that, so you can do it as well. And that is what it is. Yes? What is the uh, physical implementation of SIMI? Does it involve a uh, SIMOM or something else? Well, I will give. Yeah, so you are asking if it's uh, also implemented like SAM, or what was the other? If it's using the uh, SIM, SIMOM um, and transport protocol, well, yeah, this is a part of the Simi. Like, Simi has a RESTful service, and it also has this uh, messaging stuff uh, that uses the SIM, basically. Uh, Microsoft is pushing a lot of, of, on, on this stuff. So it is part of the Simi standard, but it's not part of the REST uh, parts of the standard. But it's developed, uh, like, in parallel. They're, they're basically doing the same thing, but with SIM you can do uh, a lot of, uh, like, a messaging stuff. Or it's more like messaging uh, access to the cloud providers. But they share the same entities on the backend. Okay, so it's talking to a SIM op, which talks to um, SIM providers to do the actual work? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. We need to talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are not using this, uh, we, we use just this RESTful API, like, but I, I know that people are interested in this SIM as well. But I don't know if it was uh, officially released like yet. I know this part of the standard, but I don't know if it was officially released with SIMI. You've got two pieces. You have the transport uh, piece and the uh, API binding. Yeah. But that has to uh, talk to something that does the actual work. Right. So Currently, there is nothing to do uh, actual work. Like, this is just a standard. Like, there are no implementers. So, but on the backend, yeah, <laughs> I think this will happen. Like, it will have the SIM and stuff. I know that IBM is, for example, working on the OpenStack adapter for Simi, so they will offer a Simi API for OpenStack. There's no backend, but how does it do anything? Yeah, but well, they will find a way how to map it to the OpenStack entities. So it's all just about the API translations, like how to translate an image to the machine, and you know, fill the properties, be Simi compliant. So, yeah. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you. If you are shy and don't want to ask, just catch us here so we can speak. Pay us a coffee. <laughs> yeah. Thanks.